Okay, here's a projectile motion problem, um, similar to the other ones, but this one, it doesn't tell us the initial velocity. Instead, it tells us the horizontal velocity is 16, the vertical velocity is 12, and that's all we know. And with that alone, we have to figure out what's the velocity when it hits the ground, how much time does it spend in the air, and how high does it go? It seems like an awful lot to find with such few given. The trick is we gotta remember our hidden givens. Remember, there's things that happen in projectile motion that you're just expected to know, so it's kind of secretly given. Okay, so I listed the given for you. Here's what we really know. The velocity in the x, 16 meters per second. Velocity in the y, positive 12 meters per second. We'll use SOHCAHTOA and Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. But before we do, I need to remind you of the hidden given. All right, first, the velocity in the y direction at the top is zero. Now it doesn't actually stop, it's still moving sideways, but it's just not going up and down anymore. It's kind of if you throw something straight up, it gets to that highest point, and then it comes back down at the highest point, the velocity was zero. So projectile motion, it's moving sideways and going up and down at the same time, so the up and down velocity is zero. That's a hidden given. The other one, um, the acceleration due to gravity, I'm going to use negative 9.8 this time. The third hidden given that I use in this problem is that the initial velocity in the y direction, which we know is 12, is the opposite of the final velocity in the y direction, which is going to be downward at 12. Okay, here we go. So we're going to know everything that we need to know to solve it. Let's do it. The first thing I did, I drew a little triangle. I drew a right triangle and I labeled the horizontal velocity 16 and the vertical velocity 12. I used Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. I got a velocity of 20 meters per second. Then I had to use SOHCAHTOA to find this angle. So since I knew the opposite and the adjacent, I used tangent. I said tangent theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent. Put that into my calculator. I used inverse tangent, and I got an angle close to 37 degrees. I think it was really 36.8. So I just rounded. So we'll say that's 37 degrees. All right. Now I know how fast it takes off. Well, since it starts at one height and it ends at the exact same height, whatever its velocity is here when it takes off is the exact same velocity here. The only thing that changed is the angle. So I wanted to show you like how I would prove that. Since I know the initial velocity upward was 12 and the final velocity downward was negative 12, that actually makes another right triangle. The velocity in the x never changed, it's still 16, but the velocity in the y direction is now negative 12. So that makes the hypotenuse still 20. The only thing that's different is when it took off, it had an upward angle of 37 degrees, and when it hits the ground, it has a downward angle of 37 degrees. All right, so how fast was it going when it hit the ground? 20. Next, how much time did it spend in the air? Well, I'm going to use the same hidden given. I'm going to remember that the initial velocity is upward at 12 and the final velocity is downward at 12. Put it into this formula. Well, I know the initial velocity, I know the final velocity, and I know the acceleration in the y direction, that's gravity. Plugged it in, got a time of 2.45 seconds. All right, almost done. The last thing was to find out how high it went. That's where I use that other hidden given about the velocity in the y direction at the top is zero. So I use this formula, uh, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2ad. And that d is the displacement in the y direction. That's going to give us the maximum height. So to find the height at the highest point, I use the velocity in the y direction at the highest point. That was zero. So I plugged in the zero, plugged in the initial velocity in the y direction, and I solved for a total vertical displacement at the highest point of 7.35 meters. All right, there you go. That's how you take just a very little bit of given information and find everything you need to find for projectile motion. I'll see you in the next problem.